Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And before we start this video, I want to say thank you to the most recent member here on the channel, Bucks TB12, who now holds the rank of team captain here on the channel. Uh, as always, if you guys are interested in becoming a member of the channel yourself, blue join button right next to the subscribe button. I'll also have a link down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about all the players that you guys need to keep an eye on for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers week 10 matchup versus the Carolina Panthers. And let's get right into it. I'm already breaking the rules, but it is offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, who you guys have been absolutely flooding my comment section about the past couple of weeks. Understandable. Okay, that is completely understandable. I get why there is more of a microscope on Byron Leftwich for the past couple of weeks in the games versus the Giants and the game versus the Saints. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I am not going to go ahead and say here whether or not Byron Leftwich is a good or bad offensive coordinator. I feel like I I can't come to a decision for that personally because I don't believe that I know enough about being an offensive coordinator in the NFL and the X's and O's and all the different types of things that go into it. But I will go ahead and say that, yes, this microscope does deserve to be put on Byron Leftwich in terms of his duties as an offensive coordinator. Uh, in both games versus the Saints, it feels like he was just completely completely outclassed by the Saints coaching staff. Uh, pretty much the entirety of the Buccaneers coaching staff was outclassed in both those games. A lot of people thought that he had an overall average uh, performance versus the Giants and then a very uh, not great performance versus the Chicago Bears. And I've been told multiple times by you guys in the comments section as well as some colleagues and associates of mine um, and some very you know close personal friends of mine that you know Byron Leftwich has been a vanilla play caller multiple times so far this year. And I've being, I'm being told that from friends who aren't even fully Bucks fans. So that's kind of interesting to get that outside perspective as well as the perspective of all of you guys as well. Again, I don't really feel like I am on the authority to say as to whether or not Byron Leftwich is doing a good or bad job. But I will say that, yes, there are some questionable things that have been done. The overall discipline of this offense has been questionable at times and Overall, I would like to see some things changed in terms of the personnel, who's getting the ball, what are we doing in certain types of situations. I would like to see certain things change there. Now, again, you know, I will say this again. I can't really determine that, and you guys have let me know down in the comment section below how you feel about Byron Leftwich as an offensive coordinator, but I will say that, yes, this microscope that has been placed under him the past couple of weeks is warranted, in my opinion, and if it continues there may have to be bigger changes that need to be made overall for this offense for the remainder of the season and going into the playoffs. Whatever that change may be, be it Bruce Arians taking over play calling, uh, you know, something along those lines, I am unsure, but something big would have to change there. So that's just kind of something I wanted to mention. The next player worth mentioning is another person who's been getting a ton of criticism the past couple of weeks and really throughout the season, it's left tackle Donovan Smith. Now, I will be completely honest, you guys all know my thoughts on Donovan Smith, is that he is a very inconsistent player, so I don't expect much from him from a game-to-game -game basis. That has been very well established here on this channel. But, uh, you know, taking a further look at it, he had two really bad games against the Saints, he had a pretty rough game versus the Chicago Bears, and then I thought he did okay recently versus the Giants. But again, much like in the case of Byron Leftwich, I get why people are focusing in on Donovan Smith. And in the case of last week, having Ali Marpet not be there is going to be a big problem. But with the amount of money that Donovan Smith is making, $14 million, $14.25 million a year, uh, you expect him to play better than what he's doing right now. I think that everybody could say that, you know, regardless of, of how much you're an apologist for things. I, I really do think that everybody could say that, yes, you would like to see Donovan Smith playing better at left tackle. And I've seen a lot of people talk about certain things that should happen to replace Donovan Smith, and I will say it again, Donovan Smith is not going to be replaced this year. Now, I do have certain, you know, a certain video coming out here in the near future talking about a potential thing that the Buccaneers could do to replace Donovan Smith, but that kind of change would not happen until the offseason. Really, as it stands right now, the Buccaneers do not have a ton of options to replace Donovan Smith for the remainder of this season, and in fact, they're, they're non-existent. So, Donovan Smith will be the left tackle for the remainder of this season, and 
quite frankly, it, they just have to deal with it. You know, however that needs to happen in terms of giving extra protection on the left side of the offensive line, because honestly, Tristan Wirfs is playing very well this year. Um, maybe throwing a tight end over there, whatever they need to do, it's something they need to account for and really just deal with here. You know, that that's just the facts of the matter, people. So, yeah, Donovan Smith, keep an eye on him, how he performs here against this Carolina Panthers pass rush. I thought he did a pretty decent job last time uh, they played this team in week number two. We will see if he can continue that and have a bounce back game from that Saints game as well. So keep an eye on Donovan Smith. The next player worth mentioning is going to be running back Ronald Jones, who has had a really interesting situation since he had that three 100-yard rushing games in a row. He's fumbled a couple of times. He maybe had a drop here, a drop there, and it seems like they have a very short leash on mistakes with Ronald Jones. It seems like if he makes one uh, turnover type of mistake, you know, be it a fumble or something like that, I mean, they'll, they'll pull him right away, and they will take him out for a large chunk of the game after that and put in Leonard Fournette, and I want your guys' thoughts on that. I know there are a lot of Leonard Fournette fans in the comment sections and things like that, so I do want your thoughts on that situation, but overall, um, I, I think that it may be a little unfair to pull a guy just because he may have a fumble or one really bad drop or something like that, especially a guy who you put in so much confidence for in the offseason, and also given the fact that he had three 100-yard rushing games in a row, like, he proved that he can be a good starting caliber running back for this team, like, and I also understand that if you have the guys there, why not try and rotate them in, but... You know, pulling a guy after making one mistake, I don't really think that that's a great way of handling things. But again, give me your guys' thoughts about that down in the comment section below. The reason I have Ronald Jones here is because of just the, the weird situation he's been going through the past couple of weeks in terms of, you know, really getting pulled for Leonard Fournette at multiple points in multiple games. So give me your thoughts about that down in the comment section below. Let's look for Ronald Jones to hopefully have a bounce back game and show that he can get back to that 3-100 yard uh, game in a row type play that we saw earlier this season. The second to last player I want to talk about, guys, is another guy I mentioned here earlier in the video when talking about Donovan Smith. It's right tackle Tristan Wirfs. Uh, this guy's been playing phenomenal so far this year against all different types of pass rushers. I mean, he really has had to go up against a freaking gauntlet. And you know what? He's been really good this year. I, I saw, I believe, John Ledyard uh, John Ledyard of uh, Pewter Report say that he's already in the conversation for one of the best right tackles in the NFL. I don't know if I would go that far. I, I would say he's definitely in the top half already. I would say that 100%. I mean, he's playing some outstanding football. And, you know, maybe he is one of the better right tackles in the NFL already. We'll, we'll have to wait and see here what next year brings, what they decide to do with him along the offensive line, and all those different types of things. But so far, through nine games... Tristan Wirfs has been great, and I know that he can't win Offensive Rookie of the Year because offensive linemen don't win that, but if they did have a chance of winning that award, he would definitely be up there in my opinion. He's been playing phenomenal football. Um, he really, really exemplifies what we should have for this offensive line in terms of protecting Tom Brady. I mean, he he's he, he's the guy you want, okay? If, if everybody along the offensive line was playing like Tristan Wirfs, there would be no problems whatsoever, you know? So overall, very happy with Tristan Wirfs. He's a phenomenal young rookie for this team, and I'm excited to see him play for many more years here in Tampa Bay. But guys, the last player worth mentioning is going to be Jamel Dean, who again, a lot of people were very critical of coming out of that Saints game. There was one play where I don't know if it was a busted coverage. He, Jamel Dean maybe misread a wrong thing. I'm unsure, but a lot of people had read it as, um, I believe Sean Murphy Bunting's mistake, something along those lines, but then it was revealed that no, it was actually Jamel Dean who made the error there, and a lot of people were very critical. They were saying, you know, take Jamel Dean out of the game, he's awful, he's not doing very good, which I understand the frustrations from that one play, it was a busted coverage, things happen, but... Overall, I expect Jamal Dean to bounce back. He is going to have a tough matchup here against Robbie Anderson, who I feel is one of the more underrated wide receivers in the NFL. But Jamal Dean has had a couple of not great games. But we've also seen him put up some really good games as well. Uh, it's really sometimes hit or miss with Jamal Dean, which kind of guy you're going to get. I, I think he's still learning the nuances of being an NFL caliber corner. Uh, it's good that he's got a guy like Carlton Davis there to help him out. That's, that's always a good thing. So, We'll see. I expect Jamel Dean to have a big bounce back game here versus the Panthers. I expect him to uh, just continue to grow as a young cornerback and, um, you know, hopefully just overall develop into being a very solid second, you know, slash third cornerback with Sean Murphy bunting here for the remainder of the season. But guys, that's really going to be it for this video. Let me know what you thought about all the players that I mentioned down 
in the comments section below. What are your thoughts on Byron Leftwich and how he's performing as an offensive coordinator? What are your thoughts on Donovan Smith? I already know your guys' thoughts on Donovan Smith and pretty much Byron Leftwich as well. What are your thoughts on Ronald Jones, Tristan Wirth, and finally Jamel Dean? Just just give me your all, give me all your uh, thoughts on that. That would be greatly greatly appreciated. And uh, just to kind of give a quick plug, I did just do a recent episode here with the Cannon Fire podcast previewing this game versus the Carolina Panthers. So if you guys want to go check that out, go watch the Cannon Fire podcast here on YouTube. I'm sure they'll comment somewhere down in the comment section below, and uh, the support to them would be greatly appreciated by not just me, but them as well. So definitely go give it a look if you have a chance. But guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.